The hanging of the crane. It's easy to feel like enemy of society, some call the simplest of minds anarchist, while most people are looking for companionship or like-minded people. As the internet dawned on humanity, socialites became ghosts. In this grand coming out party, people and their words got lost in a maze of aloofness. The human mind, changed becoming a hermitage creator, isolated behind a keyboard. Our unsociability, created a volatile prison of wireless, seamless cobwebs. Sometimes we tap the spider webs, in hope a social arachnid would come by for a visit. After all, the technological spider must eat. I used to look at the internet as being trapped on a deserted island, with a never-ending book. At first glance that don't sound too bad, but years down the line you find yourself looking for bottles, ripping paper from your endless book, making notes, Notes you hope others will find as the bottles wash up onto their island. We have created a very strange world for ourselves. Hundreds of years ago, we called the discords of society, the 907s. These were friends of friends, but they were enemies and rancid creatures, to themselves. Privately they harbored ill will toward others, but locked it away they allowed the hate to wash it away. They learned the tricks to hide the pain as they saw the world change hidden from others, a smile was all that could be seen. But sometimes their shell would crack and then we would have a creature like Jack. I wonder what the 907s would do, if they were dumped into our world from theirs. Would they find the ways, the same ones that we have loved and maimed, the thoughts conjured up by Hades or would they act as others do or as they have? Many things have changed, from the time of pens and papers, to horses and wagons. The 907s, bang away on their keyboards from dark dirty rooms, they can hide behind an interactive altar of glass, that brightly lights their eyes. At some point in our lives, a blinding truth will hit us all very hard, good will find evil, evil will find good, good will try to help evil. In the end both will be affected by the outcome. They will find ways to carry out their plans, the problem most won't see the clues, even the evil has master writers, tomorrow's heroes are today's readers, for example, many of the Zodiac Killer's puzzles, were easily broken by two constant readers, a man and his wife who played crosswords each morning. For a moment, ask yourself do you know anyone that plays crosswords with paper and pen? As we grew in our little boxes, covered in spider webs, time ticked on and with it went the complexities of languages. Somewhere out there on the bottom of the ocean is a treasury of synonyms and antonyms, these strange, forgotten words have become clues, the new however old secret code of the modern day pirates. I once knew a German man, who asked me if I'd ever seen a book burn. Sadly, I had to say yes. Right now on your bookshelves, books the keeper of words, slowly smoke. An invisible fire burns at their hearts. They feel forgotten and lost. An unloved slave of a forgotten master, all of this is a tragic response to the technology of today. I think they have accepted their fate, as they watch you from their dusty homes, if we could see their eyes, would be see tears when they see yours glow brightly from your reading tablet or phone. They cry, they cry. As their once white pages turn amber with age, brown from smoke and dust. Unlike society they remember the hanging of the crane. One question, a statement, and its answer still elude me, as I dust off a copy of Essays and Stories by Edgar Allan Poe. As I hold the copy in my hands, I thank it for all of its time it has spent with me, helping me, never judging me for the funny faces I make as I read. I pose that simple question and statement. Once there was voice. People gathered around campfires and told myths and legends of old. Then came books, they gathered the voices, so more could hear, so others could hide or get lost in their special book, this however replaced human contact and kinship, creating a forgotten void, places called libraries filled these voids, people gathered and spoke about books, 
tales brought laughter and terror, thought and invention once more. The world became encased in a shell of magical worlds where anything could happen. Then came technology, books became dusty, libraries are slowly disappearing our shell has cracks in it. My question for you dear reader, the ones that still turn the pages of old, that still listens to this old man ramble. Now that our books are brown and brittle, what happens when technology fades away? To quote the raven, nevermore.